Here in Belgium, a lot of people have talked for a long time about something should happen for young people that graduate and um, to help them take their next steps. When you come out of a school, in the school you're in a bubble very often and uh, you're very protected within that bubble. And then you leave that bubble and a lot of the dancers don't know where to start. They don't know what to do, where to begin, because it's, it's a wide world out there where, again, the level of dance today is so high um, and they all have their own expectations, plus they all want to reach their goals really, really fast. That has to do with our society also, of course, our, our uh, social media, everything has fast, fast, fast. So they want to develop fast, they want to reach very fast, but things need time. And that is what we try to make it very clear also within Junior Ballet, that nothing happens like this. And that um, if you want to become a true prof professional, that that takes time and craftsmanship and that goes on so much longer than just in the school or after school. It's for the rest of your career that you have to keep developing and that you have to keep exploring and putting your own bar, bar higher and higher and higher. So we constructed a program in 2019 which um, emphasizes mostly on development. It's a two-year program, but because of the pandemic, it happened that dancers stayed with us for a third year in a row. Um, and we have three important aspects. That's how I look at the program. One um, aspect is all the studio experience. We have our daily ballet classes. Um, we take that very serious every morning from 9.30 till 11. Most of the time it's Altea, it's our in-house ballet master, but we also have very regularly guests that uh, come and teach. And then we dive either into workshops given by assistants of uh, leading choreographers and we dive into a specific style or a choreographic work of uh, someone, or we are preparing performances. And the performance aspect is the second very important part of junior ballet because um, we all know it's on the stage that the dancers really discover who they um, are artistically and um, that is our number one priority one thing is to say we look for dancers who have technique yes of course we need a base to work with we need a classical steady um, base of technique but we are also looking for artists or people that we think are not yet there, but can discover themselves and can become an artist. Someone who's maybe also a bit different than all the rest. If you look at the dancers here at Junior Ballet, we don't have uh, 20 of the same height and the same bodies and the same, no. We look very individual. We look at the um, capacities of, of the dancers, some excel in more classical work, others excel in more contemporary work, and we try also to bring within the program the versatility of N, 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 the whole, um, in French we would say, éventail, the whole uh, fan of, of different aspects of the dance. And that's uh, what we believe is most interesting and what we believe is crucial for a young dancer today to become or, or to come in touch with. Um, so we have the studio experience, we have the stage experience, and then the third aspect is that we also uh, work together towards their audition period. So we create their audition material, we film them, we make sure that the exercise, the variations, that the whole portfolio is actually um, made and created and that they are ready to send out and to represent themselves to a company if they want to go in audition. There are many reasons why we chose Cinderella. I think first of all for us we felt like a next step to take was to try to bring a story ballet. Um, I have to be very very honest in saying that um, it, it, it all started with an idea and with something that 
I did not think was actually going to happen because we know how difficult it is to bring a story ballet and what, uh, first of all, you need finances. Second of all, if you want to do it in a right way, in a good way, then you don't bring a story ballet just with tape. And then you look for live orchestra and then you need a costume designer. And so um, it was a little bit a leap of faith that we took. Cinderella for me is a story about dreaming and about dreams that can come true. My name is Tilly and I'm from England, Hampshire, and I trained at the Royal Ballet School, the upper school in London. Um, and I came to JBA because it's a really good stepping stone from school to professional life. I'm dancing Cinderella, which has been um, a huge experience for me so far. It's um, a really interesting role because it's new choreography from Alan and Altea, but with the original score, which uh, brings a more traditional side. Um, so there's been some freedom for interpretation, but it's also such a, a classic. I am Luca Birler. Uh, I come from the Konik Lecker Ballet School Antwerp, here next door. Um, and now I train at JBA. And uh, the reason why I chose uh, JBA specifically is because um, they not only give you a proper ballet technique, they also give you a lot of repertoire and, and um, different styles such as Dawson, uh, Foresight also we used to work on, uh, Spook. Uh, in this production of Cinderella I will be playing the Prince and the Dance Master. Um, the Dance Master is actually based more or less on, on Balanchine style. He, he's very quick with the feet, very uh, spontaneous and um, bright. And for the prince, I, I just thought of, of how would I personally be like if I was a prince. My name is Rinka Matsura. Uh, I'm from Japan and I'm from Kumamoto, which is a really small city. Uh, that's where I started doing ballet. The reason why I came to JBA, Junior Ballet Antwerp, is that it's such a great place to learn the step to be a professional dancer because this is a junior company to live as a dancer because uh, it's totally different thing than being a student in a ballet school. My name is Soazig, I'm from France. Uh, I trained in Paris and Toulouse and then uh, as an independent in Paris also with Eleonore Guerino. Uh, I joined the uh, GBA last season and I came here to keep on developing as a dancer. Like I wanted especially to improve my, of course, classical technique, but also versatility to the use of my back, my musicality. And uh, yeah, the very first time I came here, I right away felt it could be the right place for me. I'm Rosita, who is like the younger sister. Uh, in my interpretation of the role, she's, uh, she's not a bad person. Like sometimes she, of course, falls a little bit into the, the bad games of her sister because her sister sometimes tends to bully a bit Cinderella and she goes with it. But in her mind, it's like the whole life is um, maybe a game. She cannot really think that people are mean for real. So in my ideas, it's really like her life is very boring actually in the, in the big house with the mom who really doesn't love so much the sister or at least doesn't show this love. Nothing is really happening. So like the only way for her to have a more interesting life maybe is to imagine that everything is a game. Yeah, when the announcement of the ball arrives, she's just so happy because finally something is going to happen. And she just, she sees stars everywhere and she wants to try all the jewelry, all the, the clothes. And in the, in the ballroom, she's just like so happy to see everyone dancing. She doesn't really care so much about the prince. She's not, like, she's not in this competition. She's just like so happy to see all these girls. From the beginning, we said that we wanted to alter the storyline just a knot. Because we felt one thing is to bring 
a story ballet, very often the story ballets also come with magic, which is unreal. And we thought, how can we now in 2023, how can we come with a, the base of the story, but make it more real, make it more um, attracted for a public to also understand it and to feel more related to it. And the first thing that came to mind was um, to get rid of the fairy godmother. Because the fairy godmother comes out of nowhere in the story and we felt that um, it didn't help or it didn't yeah, really help the, the construction of the whole storyline if there's just a fairy godmother appearing from somebody and magically everything. So we said, what if we work on the um, past or the, the, the real mother, her mother that passed away, and what could we do with the spirit of her real mother appearing again and helping Cinderella transform and leading her up to the ball. So the connection of the mother-daughter, which we wanted to bring in again, in then very much contrast to the stepmother. So that is one of the things that we altered. Uh, a second thing that we altered is in the third act, where we also felt um, maybe it's not necessary for the prince to travel the world to go <laughs> to all these countries and visit. So in our version, the prince will fall asleep at the very beginning of the third act, and he will see the appearance of Cinderella in everyone. So we have all of the girls that were in the first and in the second act, they are dressed as Cinderella's. And they will cross and they will run and they will dance from him. Some will try to seduce him, some will try to... Um, and then we have the two sisters that we bring back in as a more comical relief in there, um, who are uh, pestering him, who are annoying him. Um, so that whole third act or a big part of the third act is actually a dream. Another thing what is quite special with this performance is that we are going to bring it outside the environment of a theater. Um, mainly that this had to do with the fact that um, since we don't have our own theater, we always have to look for possibilities and for places. And um, on a yearly basis, we can dance our performance in the Opera House, which is wonderful, but usually that is one or two performances and that's it, because we have to be slot into the schedule of the, of the company, obviously. So I said, yeah, but if we want to construct a whole story ballet of, of two-hour production, we are not going to do invest all of that into two shows. So I went on the lookout for a special location, and I have found something exquisite, which is an, a very old building here in the city centre in Antwerp. Um, uh, neoclassical building and um, it has all these beautiful arches and gothic decoration there is no gold in there it's not like uh, not like here but it's exquisite and uh, the moment I stepped my, my first foot in there I said this is this is where we have to perform this ballet so we are bringing a dance floor in there we are building a whole audience in levels in that place. We bring in an orchestra in there, 34 people orchestra. Uh, we will be 30 dancers because we are only 15, but we have a collaboration going on with the Royal Ballet School. The space is so unique that there is no way that we need to bring in any decor, any... Um, it, the, the place is the scenery. And um, to be able to put that scenery, to emphasize even more on the... On the um, you have to see to believe it, it's so difficult to, to explain. Um, but we thought, what if we work with a digital 3D mapping, which the interior of the building will get um, or will be transformed into either the house or the mansion or the palace, and that changes one scene changes to another scene by changing the colors or by having 
sparkle golden glitter fall down and they um, it, it's all done with computer but it's it's wonderful and once it's there it also doesn't move anymore I hope that people are um, are going to love it as much as we do because there is a, a lot of passion um, behind this production also first of all a lot of passion behind junior ballet um, obviously, otherwise you can't do it, you can't build anything from scratch if the passion is not there and if you don't believe that you can actually mean something for a new generation of, of artists. Mm -hmm.